Journey Church. Glad to have you with us this morning and glad for a, another beautiful Sunday that the Lord's given us. And we're going to get straight into the Word and go to the Lord in prayer and, and just pray for all the needs out there. And uh, if you know somebody that has a need, pray for them. Send it, to, send it to us. We'd be glad to pray for them. But uh, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get into the Word this morning. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the day. And thank you, Lord, again for another opportunity you've blessed us with. Thank you for good health, Lord, that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for touching and moving in a mighty way, Lord, against this coronavirus, that you're touching hearts and, Lord, touching bodies, Lord, with healing. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, right now for a hedge of protection around your people. And, Father, we pray, for Lord, for that you would give knowledge, Lord, for people to know how to cure and, and uh, to give the right medications and the right pr procedures, Lord, for this people to be healed that struggle with this disease. And Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your touch today. Help us, Lord, as we get into your word this morning. Lord, let us be exposed to you today. And we thank you and praise you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you for again for being with us today. And, and uh, as we get into the word uh, this morning, as many of you know, and you may have seen on the Facebook post, that, that uh, I've been exposed to the COVID virus. And uh, this happened during a routine doctor procedure uh, last Friday, and, and then I got a call this week. It said uh, the doctor came down with COVID, so I was within 48 hours of his symptoms. So now uh, I have been exposed. Well, in that process, uh, I have no symptoms. I'm not sick. Uh, Lisa's not sick. So we're in, we're in good health. And uh, But we have to stay in quarantine till October through October the 23rd, which will be this coming Friday. So, <clears throat> excuse me, but please pray for the doctor and his staff that, that was around him. Pray for all the other folks that were, were exposed, that uh, the Lord would uh, put that hedge around them and protect them and keep them from getting this virus and, <clears throat> and keep them safe. Uh, so uh, at this time, just to tell you up front, we expect to return next Sunday, October the 25th at 9 and 11 for our in-person services. If nothing, don't change. If it does, you watch the Journey Church Facebook page, Journey Church Duffield, and we'll put an announcement out there. But at this time, we plan on being back in person uh, on next Sunday morning. Okay, uh, today we want to look at what it means to be exposed. That's the title of the message today is Exposed. And exposure to someone or something that uh, does not affect everybody in the same way. It don't always uh, touch you. People are exposed to all kinds of different things, but it don't ex it don't uh, have the same effect on them as it would somebody else. And a lot of things we get exposed to, we think, well, it's okay if I get exposed; it won't hurt me. And but you get out if you're fair skinned like me, and you get out and you get exposed to the sun, you're going to get sunburned. While somebody else gets exposure and they get a tan. So it don't seem hardly fair, but that's the way it works. So we have many different things that we get exposed to that has different effects on us. But in disease, some people, when exposed, quickly have symptoms and get sick. They get sick really quickly, and, and, and it affects them really quickly, while others may get exposed. It may be slow getting sick or not don't get sick at all. Their immune systems and things are set up a little bit different. But uh, these are the terms are uh, termed acute and chronic. And it deals more on the chemical side, and, and just kind of stick with me here because we're going we're to get into some definitions, but it all applies today. But acute exposure is a term used to define the duration or severity of an exposure to a hazardous agent. And again, we're talking about on the chemical side. And an actual exposure usually refers to a single incident of exposure that is short in duration with effects that are immediate and severe in the case of a hazardous agent. Again, as it relates chemically, chronic exposure refers to continued or repeated exposure to a toxic substance over a long period of time, maybe a month, months, or years. All right, often from chemicals that are used daily. And the effect of the chronic exposure can take years to become apparent in, and in many instances are permanent. So you may you hear all the commercials on TV about mesothelioma. People have been exposed to asbestos when they were working in their working years, and, and it later shows up as, as a cancer. So you think about all these kind of things, it has a chronic effect down through the years. But just keep looking at it. But some chemicals may cause both acute and chronic uh, symptoms. 
For example, exposure to a vapor may make you immediately dizzy in acute effect while over a long term it could cause damage to the vital organs of your body which would be a chronic effect. Alright, as we see today, when uh, we will see today, when we're exposed to the things of God, we can have a similar effect. So let's, let's look at it. Exodus chapter 34, we see Moses met with God on the mountain. And this was when God told Moses to cut two new tablets because he broke the other ones. And God would give him the covenant and the Ten Commandments to write on the tablets. So Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights with God on the mountain and he never ate anything or drank anything, the Bible says, and wrote the words on the tablets. And during that time, Moses was exposed to God and this had an effect on him as it uh, would, as you know, he did not really realize it. He didn't know it he had an effect and sometimes that happens to us. So let's look at Exodus chapter 34 and starting in verse 29. So now it was so, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin on his face shone while he talked with him. So Moses had been exposed to God to the point that when he came down off the mountain, his face glowed or had a shine to it that people uh, you know, said, Oh, what happened to you, Moses? What happened to you up on this mountain? So... Verse 30 says, So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. All right, verse 31. Then Moses called them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. So it almost sounds like by this statement here that they, they returned to him, that they kind of maybe ran away and said, well, Moses, you know, I, I, your, your face is shining. There's something wrong with you. Today somebody probably said, well, you've been in contact with an alien or something. Something's going on in your life. You know, what happened? Did you get, uh, get caught up in a spaceship or something? You're glowing. But we need to have the glow of the Holy Spirit in our life if we're Christians anyway. But when people need to see the difference. But it says that Moses talked with them. So verse 32 and 33 says, Afterward all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So to keep them from being afraid of him, and I don't know how brightly he shone, but he put a veil over his face so they could not see his face shining. All right, verse 34 says, But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded. Verse 35, And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. You know, and you could look at that a little... Uh, I just had this thought you could look at that a little different instance. Sometimes whenever we get around God, we're all glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and we're having a big time in the Lord. And then we get around other people and we put a veil on and people don't really know that we're even a Christian because we're acting completely different with people of the world than people in the church or with, uh, with the people of God. So we're, we put a veil on sometimes ourselves as, as Christian people and we don't really want people to know. Now, I don't want to really bring that up. I don't want them to know I'm a Christian. Well, we need to be sharing the gospel, especially in these last days, that, that people know that who God is, and we need to shine for the Lord, and we need to shine for Him and what He's put in our life. We can't stay hid in a closet. We can't stay in the shadows. But we need to be out there letting people know that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus wants to save them and take them to heaven. We need to let people know that they need to Stop sinning. They need to turn their life over to Him and follow Him. So every it, go on. It says so everyone could see the the result and the lasting effect that Moses' exposure had uh, with God on the mountain. So they could see that. And when you spend time with God and you're exposed to Him, it'll have an effect on you, and people will see a difference in your life. They will see a difference uh, of what's going on in your life when you spend more and more time with God. All right, according to the people we come, uh, that you come in contact with, that exposure and the result people see can make them afraid sometimes, just like it did with the children of Israel and even the people of God. For example, someone that was on the far end of the sin spectrum and God saves them 
and it, it, it'll radically change. Sometimes it, it, it scares people. You know, people get saved. I've seen people get saved, and they're all excited in the Lord because they were really a sinner. And whenever God saved them, set them free, it gets them all excited, and they're all excited about what God's done in their life. And people has been saved for a long time, so basically, well, they'll get over it. Well, hopefully they never get over it. Hopefully we stay excited in the Lord. We stay excited for what God has for us, and we want to continue to do that. I hope they never get over it. But we can find an example of this, something similar to this, in Acts chapter 9, in the conversion of Saul, where the Lord later changed his name to Paul. Okay, Acts chapter 9, and verse 1 and 2, says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Okay, so you listen to this. Saul is a guy that's out killing Christians. He, he's taking them. He's got orders to go to Damascus to get catch all he can. You know, because they're praying in the name of Jesus, they're, they're uh, proclaiming Jesus' name, they're preaching the gospel to people, and Saul has orders that he can go take them and, bound them and bind them. So it says, Then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus. So if he found any who were of the way following Christ, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. But on his way to Damascus, something mm -hmm. happened. He's on his way. I'm going to do this thing. And you may be on your way right now. You may be on your way to do something evil. You may be, and you, for some reason, you've got a plan today of what you're going to do. But the Lord stopped you to this point right here. I want you to listen to what happened to Paul. Paul's on his way to Damascus, and the Bible tells us it was noonday. The sun was shining bright. And a bright light came down, and Saul fell to his knees, <coughs> and he realized somebody other than just him there by himself, something was going on. Who stopped me? And Jesus told him, Saul, it's me. Why are you keep persecuting me? And, and Saul changed, and his eyes was blinded, and they had to lead him to town. All right? So even though he met Jesus... There was a fear from Jesus' followers because, you know, he has letters. We've heard about Saul. We know what Saul's doing. You know, Saul's there standing there when Stephen's being stoned. We know all these things about Saul. He's a mean man. He may have church clothes on, but he's a mean man because he wants to kill people uh, for following Christ. So Acts chapter 9 and verse 10 says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here am I, Lord. Verse 11. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. You ever had somebody get a call, in, a, in a, you know, maybe in the middle of the night, maybe any time during the day? Oh, so-and-so down here, you know, the, the mean one? He's praying. Pray for him. We need to pray for him. All right, Acts chapter 9, verse 12 says, And in a vision, talking about Paul, he said, He has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So verse 13 and 14, Then Ananias answered. See, Ananias knew what was going on. Lord, I've heard from many, many about this man how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. Verse 15 says, But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, <coughs> excuse me, and the children of Israel. So we see that Saul or Paul's exposure to Jesus had an acute effect on him. When he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, it immediately changed his life. It immediately turned him around. <clears throat> it immediately uh, come upon him with the power of the Holy Spirit to touch him, change him, and turn him around. And he was blinded for the things that were the past. And when the scales fell off, all Paul knew then from that point forward was, I'm following Jesus. Because the Lord blinded everything that was behind him and pushed him forward as he tells us. He said, I'm pushing toward the mark. I'm pressing toward the goal of the high calling of Jesus Christ. He told us in Scripture what the Lord had done for him <clears throat> and all that he had done. But Paul was radically changed that day by an acute exposure. One time, and he, done, and he had that. And you can experience the same thing today. 
you can experience those that same effect. You may have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, but today you hear it. The Lord speaks to your heart. You can be saved today. It don't have to be a process necessarily for you to go through and go through and go through and hear eight or ten messages. You can be saved today because the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power today to save and change your life. Jesus uh, explains a parable to his disciples. It's called the parable of the sower. And you see four different people in this parable. But it's look, at, it's look at this. The sower sows the word. And these are the ones. This is Mark chapter 4 and verse 15 by the way. The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the sower is sown. Alright. When uh, they hear, Satan comes and immediately takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So they've heard the gospel, they believe the gospel, but then the enemy comes and, and puts their mind way somewhere else till that's gone, and it's no longer in there. So this is why we tell you, if you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, you need to get in a good Bible-believing church. <clears throat> you need to read the Word. You need to pray. You need to be around other Christians, because that cultivates the Word of God. And it cultivates it in your life, and don't let the devil steal what the Lord has put in your life. All right, verse 16 and 17. The next one says, These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. In other words, they get into the Lord, and, you know, I'm excited about God, I've got saved. And then somebody says, oh, I don't believe that stuff. And it starts putting doubt in their mind it, because they're not rooted in the Word. They don't know uh, what the Word of God says. They've not experienced God enough at this point in their life to be rooted and grounded. You've got to be rooted and grounded in the Lord. And if not, when trouble comes, you won't be able to stand. You won't have the strength to stand. It's kind of like when you plant a tree seedling. If you put that seedling in the ground and you don't put that entire root in the ground, that tree will die. That seedling will not survive. You've got to get it rooted in good soil. You've got to get it rooted in the ground so it'll survive. <clears throat> All right? It's the same way with a new Christian. You can't survive unless you get planted and learn to grow in the Lord. You have to get planted in a church. You have to get planted in the Word of God and in praying. You have to do that. All right, Mark chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 is the next one. It says, Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things entering in, choking the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So, and you see this, you can see this happen also, and those who let everything come before God. And in being in church, we, we have people that, oh, yeah, I, I'm a Christian, I go to church, and you show up twice a year. You know, you're the C and E model, as we did a skit at youth years ago. You're the Christian uh, Christmas and Easter model. You show up twice a year, and you think you've done wonderful things. You may go up, I went to a funeral, too. I forgot about that. So I've been in church three times this year. You need, it chokes the word out of your life because you're not there. You're not a part of what God's trying to do in, your, uh, do in the church and in your life. You've got to be in there. And it may be sports, it may be relationships, it may be money, it may be other things like that. <clears throat> and this type of chronic exposure to those things will cause you to fail. It will cause you detriment in your life and you won't be able to follow Christ because you can't. You put everything else before the Lord. So you've got to put, he said, if we put him first, that all these other things would be added unto us. So we've got to put the Lord first in our life. All right, verse 20. So this is the last one said, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. <clears throat> Alright, so they've been exposed, and they have allowed this exposure to radically change their life for Jesus Christ. And they've been infected, and will never be the same as before their exposure happened. Now, I wanna, one thing that I see in this scripture, and you may say, well, that's crazy. But I want to tell you something else. As the church, it's our job also, just like a farmer, if he goes out and sows his seed, he has to do a little hoeing. He has to do a little weed cutting. He has to do a little uh, tilling of the ground to be able to, to let that plant grow like it should grow. So sometimes as a church, we may fail young Christians, and we may fail them, and we're not helping them hoe weeds, and we're not cutting out the thorns, and we're not 
doing these things to make sure that the ground is good where, where the seed's being planted. And we may have to help them, and it may take a little more. And some people that grow, uh, grow things that don't normally grow in your area, it takes a lot more work to get that plant to grow and to make it to prosper and bear fruit. All right, so let's look at another acute exposure that did not affect <coughs> the recipient uh, to the point of salvation as far as we know. Acts chapter 26, uh, uh, Paul is testifying on his own behalf as he is in chains. He's before there and he's, he's giving testimony. and He's telling the story of his conversion as we discussed earlier, what happened in his life. And he poses a question to King Agrippa. All right, here's what, here's what he says in verse 27. It says, Paul says, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? Well, Paul already knows his heart in a way. He says, I know that you believe because he, he believed the prophets. But he says in verse 28, here's what King Agrippa says. says, Then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Almost persuaded me. Don't be almost persuaded. <clears throat> to my knowledge, I, I don't know of any documentation that says King Agrippa actually became a Christian. He could have, and you may have that documentation, and I hope he did. But there is no difference between being almost persuaded and not persuaded at all. This still ends up with the same result of spending eternity in hell. You have to be persuaded to the point that you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, that you ask Him to become Lord of your life, that you accept Him as, as Savior. He was exposed, but it did not, He did not allow the gospel to have an effect on Him. He did not allow it to touch His heart like He should have. He did not because He had too much religion going on in His life to be able to accept Jesus Christ. And many were exposed to the healing power of Jesus, but never gave thanks. So uh, if you've ever been exposed to Jesus, and I see it happen in people's lives, that you know that you know that the Lord touched you, but then you never give honor to God, you never praise God, you never say the Lord healed you, <clears throat> but it's everything but that healed you. You know, it was it was a, a, a herb or a vitamin or a pill or whatever the doctor did, and the doc God gives the doctor's knowledge, but the Lord is the ultimate healer. All right, Luke chapter 17, verse 12 and 13. It says, Then, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood far off. And when, he lifted, when they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. <coughs> verse 14 says, So when, they saw, uh, when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went... They were cleansed. So Jesus healed them, all ten of them. As they went, they were cleansed. All right, verse 15 and 16 says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And why is that, why is that such a, a special thing? He is, it doesn't matter who, where he was from. But because the Samaritan was their outcast, as far as the Jews were concerned, they didn't want to have any dealings with him, but he was a Samaritan. But he's the one that came. So here's what Jesus said in verse 17 and 18. It says, So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? What happened to the other nine? But where are the other nine? Were, the, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? So God recognized who he was, where he was from, but he's the only one that returned and gave God thanks. Sometimes, uh, maybe as those Jewish people did, they think well, they expected that from God. God should do that because we're, we're a Jew. But this man didn't expect that from God, and that's why he came and returned and gave thanks. I didn't expect God to save me, but he did. I didn't, uh, you may have not expected him to save you, but he did. You need to return and give him thanks. You may have not expected him to heal you, but he did. Give him thanks. All right, have you been exposed to the healing power of God, yet you failed to give Him thanks? You've not done that. All right, give Him thanks. You've been delivered through the power of Jesus Christ, but you still don't serve Him. I've said it before, we expect God to always give, always provide, and always deliver, but never expect anything from us. You know, God's up there. He, he takes care of it all. I shouldn't have to do anything. I just show up. Open the hymnal or whatever, however you do music at your church. <clears throat> you open it up. You sing, sing the same song every week. And you close it up and you put your dollar in the offering and you go home. 
God, I've done you a great service this week. Well, have you really? You think about what all God done for you to deliver you from your sins that you can be on your way to heaven. Have you done enough? Have you done everything God wants you to do? All right, we complain about church while we seldom or never attend. And I've noticed that time and time again. We expect things to be accomplished in the church, but never volunteer to work. We always want to receive from God, but we never want to give back. We've been exposed to something <coughs> that is life-changing to the point where we will spend eternity in heaven, all right? But we don't ever want to give back to God. We don't want to give Him thanks. We don't want to do what we need to do. And if you're lost, God's let you live another day to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you still won't give your life to Him. You need to do that today. You need to accept Him today. All right, you have an acute exposure. You've heard the gospel. You've heard it today, and you realize you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And if you're lost, you need Him. You need Him as your Savior. And as we pray, uh, accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. That could be an acute exposure, just like Paul on the road to Damascus. Today could be your day. The Bible says today's the day of salvation. We don't need to put that off. We don't need to wait another week. Like the devil would say, I'll wait till next Sunday be better. You know, you could do it next Sunday and you could be there in person. You can do it right where you're at, right in your home, right in your car, wherever you're at. The Lord is there and He will save you right where you're at. All right, and you may be someone who's experienced a chronic exposure. You've been exposed to the gospel many times, like I was. I was raised in church, grew up all my life in church, heard the gospel preached many, many, many times because I, I had to go. I told people, I, you may have heard it said before, I had a drug problem. I was drugged to Sunday school, drugged to Sunday morning, drugged to Sunday night, drugged to Saturday night, drugged to Wednesday night, drugged to youth service, so I had a drug problem. I was drugged to every service it had. If there was a revival, I was drugged to that too. But that did not make me bitter for the things of God. I just never turned my life over to Christ. I had heard the gospel. I would heard it preached. I knew what the gospel was. I knew how to act uh, good in front of the church people, and I knew how to act bad in front of the bad people. And you may be doing the same thing. You may be a young person out there, and you say, well, I, you know, I've got them all fooled. They think I'm this or that. God knows whether we know or not. So you need to let God touch your heart. You need to let Him change your heart because He knows what's going on in your life. He knows the, the status of, of your relationship with Him, and you know it as well. All right? But I've seen it happen time and time again. I know people that were raised in church all their life and don't go to church, and you may be one of them right now. You've had that chronic exposure over your entire life. God's given you another opportunity today to receive Him as your Lord and Savior. He's given you another chance to accept Him in your life. You need to give that to Him. You need to turn your life over to Him for your sake, your family's sake, and, and, and others that may be around you to see the change in your life. And I talked to a man just a, just a while back, and, and this woman had been praying for her husband, and this man, he told me, he said, I prayed for this man for 20-some years. <clears throat> and he finally, he gave me a call, said, hey, I just wanted to tell you, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Don't ever give up on somebody, and don't ever give up on yourself, because the Lord's desire is to have you saved and on your way to heaven. He said, he, God gave His only Son that whosoever believes on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said it was not His will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. So we need to learn that God is, God is for us. He wants us to be a part of His kingdom. He loves you, and He wants you to be a, to be a part of, of His life, and you be, a part of his, uh, uh, you be a part of His life. So we need to accept Christ because He loves you, and He wants to save you right here today. You've heard it time and time again. You've had that chronic exposure. Let it have an effect on your life today. All right, you were raised in church. Maybe again, as I said, today's the day. God wants to touch you and He wants to, uh, wants to save you. Uh, wh whether acute or chronic exposure that you've had, whether it's short term or long term, you've still been exposed. All right, just like with this virus. You know, you get exposed, you know, and, and all these things, and you say, oh, no, I've been exposed. You know, I should have worn my mask. Well, I had a mask and all those things. Had the procedure, had to take a mask off, still got exposed. You may be exposed to things, uh, to this kind of stuff right before you, when you go to a grocery store, you know, wherever you work, whatever it is, you could still be exposed. But you, know, you can be exposed to the Jesus Christ in the same way. You can be exposed right here today if you'll let God in your life. So we pray right now that is to the point that you realize that you need treatment for your exposure to sin. You need a, you need a treatment 
for that sin that's in your life. You're infected with sin. You've been exposed. You've got all the symptoms. <clears throat> you need to have that treatment. But there's only one treatment for sin, and that treatment is available to you right now. And as we hear on the news all the time, it is available free of charge. It won't cost you one penny. It won't cost you one dime. But however, there is only one treatment, and there's only one way to get that treatment. And the Scripture tells us this. <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is realize that you're a sinner. God, I pray for conviction power right now on people that's watching that they'll realize right now that they're a sinner lost without, uh, without you. They'll, that you would convict their hearts right now that they'll realize this in their life, that they're a sinner. They've been exposed to sin all their life, but you are touching them right now. And I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to their heart right now, Lord, that they'll know, that they know in their knower, I'm lost without a Savior and I need Jesus Christ. But realize you're a sinner is what the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right, realize the price <clears throat> to be paid for that sin is death. This Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin are death. But there's a but in there. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. There's a gift in there. The gift of God that He gave His Son to die on a cross for you and He rose again the third day. He's speaking to your heart right now. I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now. He's speaking to you, telling you right now, you've been exposed to sin, but I want, I've got the treatment, and I want to give you that treatment right now. I want you to accept that treatment right now. Listen to me. All right, if you believe that Jesus died, uh, died for you and rose the third day, as is explained in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe that and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that you can be saved. You can do that today. You can be exposed to the saving grace of Jesus Christ and your sins be forgiven. You can do that today. I was exposed and I accepted the treatment. Many, many of you were exposed and you've accepted the treatment. But I believe, I believe that there's people out there today that you're listening right now. You've been exposed. You need the treatment. The treatment's free, but you've got to accept it. You've got to accept that treatment. We're going to pray today, and I'm going to ask you to pray with us as we always do. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you would listen to Him. You would listen to Him speaking to your heart right now. That you touch the, and touch Him, touch the throne of God, and say, God, I believe. I believe that you died for me. Lord, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord, I'm going to confess you today. I'm going to ask you to save me. But let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, today for this touch, Lord, and this, that I thank you that I've been exposed, Lord, and you showed me my exposure to sin, but I've also been exposed to the saving power of Jesus Christ. And Father, that you cleanse me and you wash me, that was a treatment that I needed for my exposure to sin, and that's a treatment that everybody needs for their exposure to sin. And Father, I believe there's people watching, Lord, today that you're touching their hearts. You're convicting them right now of their sin. And they can see that they need you as a Savior. You're touching them, Lord, <clears throat> and moving in their life, whether they're in their home, they're in their car, or wherever they might be today. Lord, I pray that you're touching them and touching their hearts. Lord, and they can realize, Lord, as Paul, no matter how bad a sinner you think you are, the Lord is still able, well more than able, to save, save them and set them free and help them to realize that. Lord, that you wash it all away. Lord, you don't, ca you don't calculate sin as one worse than the other, but sin is sin. And Father, you're able to wash it clean by your work on the cross at Calvary. And Father, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, as we pray with these people, Lord, that you'd speak to their hearts, speak to their lives, Lord, to see that they need a Savior. Convict them right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to stir them so much that they can't do anything else but accept you as their Savior. That you would stir them up, Lord, that you'd speak to their hearts, Lord. Lord, just stir them, Lord, in a mighty, mighty way today, Lord, that, that you would touch them, Lord, that that treatment is available, Lord, right now for that exposure to sin. And you have it, Lord, ready and waiting. Lord, and you have an ultimate supply, Lord. It's not rationed. It's not rationed, but you have a, a full ultimate supply for everybody that would come that you would in no wise cast them out. And, Father, I thank you for that right now as we pray with them today. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's pray today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's speaking to your heart right now. 
listen to me, you need to accept Him. You need that treatment for sin. And as again I said, there's only one treatment, and there's plenty of plenty of uh, uh, of it to go around because Christ said that all would come to repentance. He wants you to be saved. He's not short. His hands not or arms not shortened that He can't reach out and touch you if you'll let Him. And let's pray today. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I realize today, I realize today that I'm exposed to sin. That I am exposed to sin. There's only one treatment. There's only one treatment. And that's you. And that's you. Father, I thank you right now. Father, I thank you right now. As I realize I'm a sinner. As I realize I am a sinner. I confess that to you. I confess that to you. I ask you. I ask you to wash me clean. To wash me clean. I can believe that Jesus died. I believe that Jesus died. He rose again on the third day. He arose again on the third day. And I confess that with my mouth. And I confess that with my mouth. I ask you. I ask you. To be Lord of my life. To be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you for being with us again today. If you prayed that prayer, as I say every time, find you a good Bible-believing church. Get in the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Start the book of John. It's a good book to get, to get started with. If you've never read the Bible, if you don't have a Bible, you contact us. But there's things available online, the version uh, Bibles out there with devotionals and things to help strengthen you daily and daily to, to be able to stay in the Word of God. But you've got to do that. You've got to get in there. You've got to get in there with, with the people of God. And today... But of course, we'd love to have you join us next Sunday. Like I said, there'll be if there's any updates other than that, we'll put them out there on the on the Journey Church Duffield Facebook page. We would love to have you join us at Journey Church, 355 Cecil D. Quillen Drive, Duffield, Virginia, and we'll be doing the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. service again with the nine about 9:15 uh, when we're in the building. We'll be going live. So uh, the, if you have an opportunity to be there. Please be there or join us online. All right. So uh, pray for again for the doctor. Pray for those that have been affected with the virus. I know other pastors I've talked to that you know they've had people in their church exposed. Maybe they're exposed. So just be in prayer for these folks that's that's fighting a battle in this virus. And there's many other people that are sick in many other different ways that need your prayers. So pray for them as well. And and as we say, let's go on the journey together. Thank you.